Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I like to go over that how you can create your server-side pages using Vapor Leaf templates. And we will be specifically looking at Vapor 4 and how you can create Vapor Leaf templates and server-side pages in Vapor 4. This will be very basic introduction kind of a video. So I'm not going to dive into more details of how to access the database and all that kind of a stuff. And you'll see that you'll have to uh, set up a couple of different things to even get started with Vapor Leaf. Now the first thing is that the Vapor 4 is not really released right now. It is uh, Vapor 3 is the correct one, but we can still use Vapor 4 and I'll show you how. First I'm going to go ahead and say Vapor Help so I can see all the different commands to create or to work with Vapor. The one that I'm looking for is right over here which allows me to create a web app or a website, a server-side pages, using Vapor, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say Vapor New, the name of the project, I'm just gonna call it Hello Leaf, slash slash hyphen hyphen, sorry, web. And now I want to indicate that I will be using Vapor 4 and not Vapor 3. So I have to say branch equals to four. Now, hopefully in the future, obviously, I don't really have to type this Vapor, I mean, the branch four part, but right now, since this is just a release candidate, you do have to specify that you are using Vapor 4 while using Branch 4. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this and you'll see that it basically creates the Hello Leaf project, that's perfectly fine. And it is on the desktop as you can see. Let me go ahead and jump into the Hello Leaf project and I'm gonna go ahead and run Vapor Xcode. This means that I want to create the Xcode project using the code well, that Vapor has actually created for me. Now this step is going to take a while, so we're gonna come back when this is finished. All right, so I have, after finishing the Vapor Xcode, I have opened up in Xcode. Now a couple of different things you need to do, make sure that the Mac is selected. And the other thing, make sure that the run is selected over here because you will be running the app or that's the target that you want. And you will be running it on the Mac, not on your iPhone. Now, even with this, you do have to set the scheme. So I'm gonna to go to edit scheme and make sure that you are selecting the run over here and then make sure that you are selecting the options. If you scroll down, you will see the option for working directory. And we want to use that, we want to set the working directory as the directory of your project so that it is it knows that we are talking about the vapor pages and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna select the project directory, which is my hello leaf folder. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now let's go ahead and build our app. Now the first time you're building, it is going to take a little bit of time because it has to index and all that stuff that it has to do. But uh, hopefully it's going to be not, not a while, I guess. Uh, and once it is finished, we can go ahead and take a look at different files, all right? So it's done building. Now the first thing we need to check is let's go to our app folder and in the app folder you'll see routes. So these are a couple of different routes that are already written for you. This one is the root route so it basically means localhost 8080 and this one goes to I believe hello and I guess you can also pass in a parameter, a route parameter. So hello dash or hello uh, slash something like John or whatever. A couple of different things I don't really like about this auto-generated code is that they're using R and they're using C. So that's just a bad practice right there. So make sure that you don't follow that those bad practices and make sure that you update those to be a little bit more descriptive names. So hopefully in the final release of Vapor, they will not use R and C and things like that. They will be a little bit more descriptive, just uh, basic programming practices that you should be familiar with, all right? Let's go ahead and build this. Okay, so it works fine. Now, the first thing I would like to do is I just want to go ahead and run the app, go to the root URL and see just what happens, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and run the server. And as soon as the server is running, it is going to open up the output window and it's going to show me the address that it is running. So here we go, we can actually see it is running on localhost 8080. So we can definitely use that. Uh, let's go over here. And if we go to 8080, we can actually see that it says it works. So definitely our access or our basically page is working correctly at this point. 
Great, right? So that's the first thing you should always do. Make sure that it is working. Okay. Now the question is, well, it's working, great, but how is it working? So how part, well, let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, I like to comment out these things, the all the, the default stuff. If you do want to add code, I always encourage you to, to write the code. Don't do this. This is bad, no. If you're learning things, and I've been doing programming for whatever, 15 plus years, I still type it out. I will comment it out and I will type it out. All right, so what we want to do is we want to display a page when the person goes to the root URL. Okay, so routes.get, this is a root URL anyways, request object, and this is going to return us something called the event loop future, which means that this is going to be non-blocking thread and it is going to be returning us future, which in other words is called promises. And so it's not non-blocking, it's immediately just going to return. And eventually this promise is going to be completed and we will return most probably a view. So view.render. And what view do you, do you want to render? I'm just gonna say, I want to render index view. Now index view and all the other views are inside the resources. You can see that we have these couple of different views that are already part of your application, but we don't really have any view called index. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. And I will call that index and the extension would be leaf because these are called leaf templates. All right. One of the things you will see over here is that the base.leaf. Now base.leaf is called the master page, which is coming from ASP.net, or like some very old thing that we're talking about. The base template or the master page, what it allows you to do is that it consists of different placeholders. You can see over here, there's a placeholder called import title, and there's a placeholder here, import body. So what's gonna happen is that other pages, which are content pages, like my index page, will have the ability to inject something over here and inject something over here, which is great because I can create a base page with nice menu and all the JavaScript if I need to, and all the link to the style sheet, and the other content pages, well, most of the time the content pages is just changing or injecting stuff in the body, but the menu and all the other stuff remains the same. So that's the whole point of a master page, which in this case is our base page or the base.leaf. So how do we start using our base leaf? So I'm gonna to go to the leaf template and I will go ahead and say extend base. So I do have to specify that I will be extending base, which is the actual name of the file, base.leaf, which means I will be using the master page over here. Then in the body, I will have to say whatever I want. So export. And what do I want to export? Well, what I want to say is that the title, in the title, go ahead and just say index. What do you mean title, right? So if you go to the base template, you can see that this place right over here, we will be injecting something from the content page. This is a content page. And the thing that we're injecting is index. That's just a string and make sure that we close this body out. So I will say end, extend, and that is our page for now. So this means that whenever we say export, it is going to try to find a section which is called title in the base layout, and it is going to find it because here it is. And right over here, it's going to inject whatever I am exporting from my index.leaf. So I'm exporting just a text call or just a string, I guess, index. So that part index will travel all the way and it will going to be injected right over here. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see that if we can see our uh, index page. So I'm gonna go to the root URL and something bad has actually happened. It's not even able to pull up the page. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Okay, so it's saying over here that serialization, something, something. In other words, it's basically saying that, hey, why didn't you provide it as the body? 
Now, this is another, I would say, limitation. Kind of weird that I have to provide the body. I mean, it's it should be my choice. I don't want to provide the body. Just put nothing in there. But if you're using vapor, you actually do have to provide the body, which kind of, it's just kind of weird that you have to do that. I mean, in all the server-side languages I have used, it's never really a mandatory thing that you do have to provide all the placeholder values. But okay, so we will provide the body and we have to spell it like a body and we can say anything I want over here. So I would simply say body. Or I can simply say this is body. Just to get started, later on we will change that obviously. Now let's go ahead and run this again and we will refresh it. And you can see that the body is being displayed and look at the title that is coming from the placeholder, which is we exported the title. So that's the title coming in. Great, right? Okay, so let's make it a little bit more interesting. What usually you will be doing is that you will be passing data from the server side to this index page. So how can we do that? So the second argument is actually the one where you can actually pass data. So the data, I'm gonna pass a dictionary uh, with a key called name and the value, I'm just gonna say John Doe. So that is the data. Most probably you will be getting data from the database or something, but just to start out, we're just passing is this static data. Now, how do I access this data? Well, using the name key. So I'll go back to my index and I would say, just to make it a little bit more nicer, I'm just gonna say like this, I'm just gonna have a body for the export also. And I would say over here, end export. All right, and in the body of the export, because I may have to type multiple lines, I can say my name is, and I will use the bold tags, or you can use any tag that you want. You don't have to use the bold tag. And right over here, I want to inject the name of the person that is being passed. So I will use the key, which is name. So this is a body. So all of this and multiple lines I can have over, obviously over here that can be injected into the body placeholder, which is in the base.leaf. And there we go. We were able to pass in John Doe. Now the great news is that all that creating of the page part has been done on the server and all that is being passed is just pure HTML. So these pages, server side pages, are actually very, very fast when they are loaded first, all right? Okay, so, okay, that's great. But what about if I wanted to pass a list of names? Well, for that, you will need to have a list of names. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a list of names over here. I'm gonna say Mary, and I'll say like Alex or something. And now if I'm passing it over here, instead of calling a name, I will create a key called names, and I will pass in names. And make sure that you return it. Okay. So we are passing a key called names whose value is names, which is this array. So how do we display this array? In other words, how do we loop through this array? Well, I'm not gonna use that. So I'm just gonna go over here and say, I can use a for loop. So for something in names. So this names is the actual names key. And what do we want to do? Well, maybe even make it nicer and put it inside a UL, I guess, right? So let's go ahead and put it inside a UL and we can put it inside a UL. If you want, you can have a little bit of uh, color syntax. I think it's over here, yeah, color coloring, but then the problem is that which one are you gonna select? Uh, maybe Markdown or I don't know, HTML. So it will have a little bit of color at least, there we go. Okay, and now we can display it. This is again up to you, whatever you want to do, you can color it, you can display it. I'm just gonna use Li, but you can use anything you want. And finally, I'm just gonna inject right over here. So it's gonna go through the names array and in the names will be injected in Li. Let's go ahead and run this. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it. And something bad again happened. Let's see what's going on. Uh, optional end export. And export end for loop most probably, I think missing. So, okay, here we go, end for loop. It would have been much nicer if they, the Vapor team should have just done like curly braces. I mean, it looks like I'm writing Python or something. All right. All right, here we go, run it again. And there we go. So we were able to display a list of names using Vapor 4. And that's pretty much it. I mean, 
obviously i'm not going to go into like more details in this i i would say you play around with this uh, that's great i am currently working on a vapor 4 course i'm i don't really have any timeline on when it will be done but i am working very slowly on the course itself which is going to cover leaf templates and databases and apis and authorization and all of those different things so stay tuned for if you're interested in learning vapor 4 it will be announced uh, later that's all i can say right now uh, but i really hope that you have enjoyed this video vapor is a brand new framework it has been going through changes i have seen vapor or we use vapor one two and three and four is again different uh, it would be nice if they can just settle on some of the syntax because this syntax that i'm using is not the same as vapor three in vapor three it may not even work so uh, it will be nice that now you're on a fourth revision that you have some standards kind of set in uh, that you can utilize, that you can use throughout or else people will just, you know, people will not like these kind of changes that you're doing all the time that, okay, now we will use the curly braces. Okay, now we're going to use a colon and all that stuff. Just, just make sure that you fix on a particular syntax and hopefully carry that syntax through multiple iteration, multiple versions, all right? So really hope that you have enjoyed it. Uh, this is basically Swift on Server using Vapor 4. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have courses on many different technologies, including Swift UI, testing iOS as a brand new course, machine learning and artificial intelligence, MVVM design pattern. Just search my name, Mohammed Azam, and you can actually check out all of my courses. If you're interested in buying the course, then the best way would be to check out the YouTube description of this video and you can find all the links. Please use the links in the video because uh, to be really honest, if you use the links, I get to keep a little bit of a higher revenue because those are referral links. So if you want to support the channel, that is going to be a best way to do it. Uh, thank you so much and I really hope that you have enjoyed the video.